What's the plan? What's your plan? What are your plans? What's the plan? What's the plan? What's your plan? What's your plan of action? Plan. What's the plan? So, what is the plan? Wait. I have a plan. I have a plan. I have a plan. That's the plan. I have a plan here. Oh, no problem. What does the new plan got? I got a goddamn plan! This plan's gonna work. Master plan, phase one, side A. What's it say? It says, I love it when a plan comes together. Can we play it louder? I want to dance. <laughs> Oh well, you're here today at Big Sucks Guy, the best Eurovision Song Contest contestant ever. You're a very quiet audience. Hello! That's where you should shout back hello to me. We'll try again. Hello! Hello everybody from We Change! Are you feeling good today? Are you excited for today? Are you hungry? Have you had your lunch yet? What did you have for lunch? Wow, sounds delicious. I think we can lower the, thank you. Okay, hello everybody and a warm welcome to the first generation Global Goals Forum here in Stockholm. My name is Clara Henry, I am a YouTuber in Sweden, and I am very proud to be your host today. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I'd just like to address the cell phone matter. Uh, please do not turn off your cell phones. I love cell phones, please use them. We have a hashtag for Instagram and Twitter, it's hashtag first generation. Uh, use this hashtag and I promise that if we make this hashtag trend throughout the evening, I will do something crazy by the end of this event. I do not know what yet, I haven't figured that out, but if you have suggestions, please let me know. Um, so why are we here today? I think that the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, said a couple of words that describes it all very well. He said that we are the first generation to end poverty and the last to end climate change. One of the Millennium Goals from the year 2000 was to cut the poverty rate in half by 2015, which we succeeded. Um, this is the first time in history that a world without poverty is not just a dream, it is something that actually will happen. On the other hand, another goal was to, um, uh, another goal was an organic, sustainable development for the environment. But today we emit 50% more carbon dioxide than we, do, uh, than we did uh, 20 years ago. So if we don't make a change now, then it will be too late. So, the Swedish Ministry for Foreign Affairs initiated First Generation to create awareness of the Global Goals. And today we're going to learn more about the, glo uh, the Global Goals and hopefully be inspired to pass the knowledge forward. And um, I think I'm going to use this one now. Oh, yeah. This is our agenda for the day. We're going to meet Michael, uh, Mikael Botnian Diamant and Stefan Landien in a sustainability quiz. We're going to meet Matilda Hellström from UNESCO, Sami Singer Maxeda Marak, and representatives from four of Sweden's big companies and authorities in a grill where you guys ask the questions. Uh, could be anything from equality to work conditions to if they are as sustainable as they claim they are. And um, 
Also, we have 18 inspirational figures in the audience today from all across the globe, from the, from the Canadian Arctics to the Marshall Islands, uh, who are here to receive diplomas for their significant work with sustainability and the global goals. And we're also getting to know five of them closer up here on stage, but more about that later. Um, when we planned this event, somebody asked me to uh, talk about my favorite goal in this opening speech thingy. And I, like, do you remember in 2012 when football player Slatan Ibrahimovic did a bicicleta? I was like, oh my god, that's an amazing goal. And then it became kind of awkward because they were like, oh no, we spoke about the global goals. And I was like, oh. But I think my favorite global goal has to be number five, the one about uh, gender equality. I can't see it really right now. It's hidden somewhere. Um, do we have any feminists in the audience today? Good. I am one as well. Uh, I am a feminist because I am a woman. Because um, feminism is basically all about equality and men, women and other gender identities are still not treated equal. I speak a lot about feminism in almost everything I do because I think we need to put on our feminist glasses to see and acknowledge the gender bias that is going on everywhere in our daily lives, in school, at work, in governments, in movies, in nightclubs, and so on. Rapists go free, although there are proof and the victim said no. Politicians all over the world, like in Sweden, in the US, and now most recently in Poland, they want to reduce and even ban the rights for abortions. And women were, uh, showing off too much of their skin are told to cover up, while women wearing hijabs are told to undress. Women all across our world do not even own the rights to their own bodies, and that's why I'm a feminist. And therefore, I am very happy to start our day by welcoming the Swedish Minister for Children, the Elderly and Gender Equality. So give a warm hand for Åsa Regnier. Girls, we run this mother. Hi everyone, it's very, very <coughs> inspiring to be here today. I think that this is a very good initiative, actually it is from the government, but still the, the good and the great thing is that you are all here and that you want to participate. Uh, as Clara pointed out before, she pointed at all the goals and she picked one which is gender equality. I am the Minister of Gender Equality and I think if we actually work with that goal, we will solve many of the other problems. Not all though, so they all come together as a unit. And I would like to comment a bit on how we work with that. And I would do that from my portfolio in the first place. And I think, uh, according to the program, the Minister of Development and Climate will be addressing you later, is that true? Then she will talk, I'm sure, about um, the, uh, uh, well, her perspectives on the same agenda. Actually, you are all a younger generation than me, and I think that I belong to a fortunate one, because in one sense, I think that when I was between 20 and 30, I think actually it's true to say that the world as such was more progressive you are more progressive than we were in our generation, but there are more governments, I'm sorry to say, and I think, who are actually not as much into human rights as they were uh, 20, 25 years ago. And what do I mean by that? I actually mean, and I've been thinking a lot about this, that all of you have a very important task to discuss and debate and carry if you like, but it should really be from all of you, this agenda. When I was, how old was I? 30, 
Uh, I went to Beijing in 1995. I was actually there at the uh, Global Conference on Women's and Girls' Rights, the UN conference, which decided on a very important platform on girls' and women's rights. That work is still very much the platform for the uh, goals that we have today. But, you know what? That is actually also the last, the latest, I hope it's not the last, but it's the latest UN conference on gender equality and sexual and reproductive health and rights. And why is that? It's so long ago. It is because resistance in the world, unfortunately, has grown so much against these rights. So there has been a strategy not to organize another conference in that way, because there is the great fear from many Democrats and democratic governments and organizations that if we reopen that kind of conference again on women's rights, girls' rights, on sex sexual and reproductive health and rights, we might actually go back in development and agreements. That is very sad. But the good news is that we are all here today and that we have these new goals instead of that, that we have lots of governments and organizations and political parties and activists who wanted something else, who want something else than this resistance. And therefore, I think that working now as you can do in the framework of the Agenda 2030 from a new generation's perspective is really a new chance and it's a great opportunity for you, I hope, but definitely for people like me to know what you want, what you demand, what you need for a future, how you want to organize in order to create this better world. I'm very sad that this is actually the reality. This is how I see it. And I have been working with gender equality since 1990, maybe. I have also had the opportunity to be the head of UN Women, which is the UN uh, body for women's and girls' rights. I was um, head of uh, UN Women in Bolivia in South America before I was appointed a minister and have seen, I think, this kind of work also from the UN perspective. And the good news, as I said, is that there are a lot of girls, boys, women and men in the world who want change. So although, unfortunately, we will, are not able to organize that kind of conferences for you to describe what you want today, this is the arena, I would say. And I'll be extremely eager to hear what you have to say and what you want us to do and what you want to do yourselves. I think also that in the, from a Swedish perspective, you might be familiar with, with uh, things that the Swedish government want to do in areas like child rights, children's rights, uh, or uh, gender equality. We have discussed, the, uh, talked about the fact that there is a special goal for uh, women's rights. There is also uh, goals for, for uh, sorry, for gender equality and women's rights, but there are also goals for children's rights. From a Swedish perspective, both these areas are very, very important. And something that we will do to implement the agenda in Sweden, because the difference from this agenda to earlier UN work of this kind is that all UN member states have to implement the agenda. That means Sweden also has to do its lesson, although we're not a um, poor country in the traditional respect. Uh, but we have to implement this agenda. And one way of doing that when it comes to children's rights is to make the child conventions uh, Swedish legislation, Swedish law. Uh, I have great hopes in that. We have an example from Norway where this was done and where you can actually see that decision makers, uh, politicians, and most of all, uh, uh, most importantly, maybe judicial systems actually take the child convention into respect to a much greater extent than before when, uh, decide, when making decisions, important decisions on children's lives. 
Uh, also, not long ago, we presented an action plan against sexual uh, exploitation of children, boys and girls, with lots of measures uh, with, uh, and also including lots of actors to combat sexual exploitation and violence against children. In the area of gender equality, I will present in a month, maybe six weeks, a national strategy against men's violence against women, um, which will focus very much on uh, prevention of these crimes and this violence. So far in Sweden, we have done, I think, compared to earlier times, quite a lot when it comes to um, protecting um, children and women, that is normally the case, uh, after, uh, after violence from fathers or husbands, uh, which is, well, from men, which is normally the case. Uh, but we have not done enough to actually prevent violence from happening. We have not discussed how to do that. We have not discussed responsibility and how to uh, create national, pro national programs to prevent violence against women. That is something that we will focus on in the new uh, national strategy against uh, violence against women. It will also have a focus on honor-related crimes and it will also have a focus on uh, the buying of sexual services, which is a crime in Sweden, and also trafficking in human beings for sexual purposes. It will build on knowledge that we already have, which uh, has to do with uh, protection of, of victims, uh, making uh, victims not victims but actors in their lives and so on and so forth. But we'll present this national strategy in a month's time and as I see that, that is one way of implementing um, the Agenda 2030 in Sweden. So there is a lot to do and I think on a international or a global level it is also important to see that as you pointed out uh, poverty has been reduced uh, in many countries. There are lots of challenges still, not least conflicts and post-conflict situations. But it's a fact that more and more countries have moved into being middle-income countries. Uh, and I think it's very important not just to think that, uh, well, that is good news, obviously. But when it comes to uh, issues like gender equality and children's rights, these are not always areas with a lot of uh, status. They are areas which are about changing power structures. And as I started out with, this creates a lot of resistance, especially when it is about uh, shifting power from men to women or from boys to girls. Uh, but when it comes to discussing with other countries who've moved into being uh, middle-income countries, I think it's important not just to discuss that, but also to see to it, how do you use your new budgets? Who gets the money, the, the state or the municipality money that you can now allocate? How do you decide upon that? Who is around the decision-making uh, people when you decide about um, this new common uh, money. Will you, will you invest in gender equality? Will you invest in children? Or will you invest only in more traditional, also important things? But I think that we have to discuss uh, these issues in a very um, concrete uh, and conscious way from a gender equality and from a child rights perspective. And as I started out uh, by saying, I think it's very important that you want to again engage in this because if you don't, this has very little value, to be honest with you. So I see it as a great task for me and my colleagues in the government to have a very frequent and open dialogue with all of you. We really need your advice on how to implement this agenda. Thank you.